Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. And tonight's message is going to be a little more direct and a little more simplest. I'm not pulling anything weird out of the message or weird out of the Bible. It's not something indirect. Every now and then I just see something, I'm like, you know, this isn't directly in the Word of God, but I think it's an important message. Tonight it's directly out of the Word of God. Plain and simple. This is 2 Kings chapter 7. We're going to start at verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Tomorrow about this time, a seah of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Um, fun fact, the king of Syria had laid siege against Samaria, and they were at the point of famine and starvation. Um, in the previous chapter, someone, some woman was actually complaining about how she and another woman had agreed to boil their children. So while she boiled hers that day, the previous day, the other woman had hit her child the next day. So she broke that agreement, and the king was so grieved he tore his clothes and he decides to blame the whole thing on Elisha. And Elisha, for whatever reason, decides, you know what? Or maybe it wasn't his decision at all. Maybe the Lord was like, you know what? I'm just going to save Samaria. I'm going to save Israel. And I'm going to let them see how I can bring about victory. Because like, there was a previous chapter where God was simply merciful. That's happened a few times here in the Old Testament, as I've mentioned in previous messages. So this is one of those times where, hey... Lord decides to be merciful. And so in the middle of this, in the middle of all this famine, in the middle of this siege, what happens is the Lord sends. Let me just actually read this, verse 6. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. And they fled. And so all of their stuff was left, all the animals, all the provisions, some gold and silver, all this stuff is left. So what Elisha was saying about a say of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel. In other words, you're going to get a lot of stuff for a very little amount of money. And so the officer's like, uh, nope. And Elisha's like, uh, yeah. So go over to verse 17. So in other all these people find out, oh, the army's gone. All this stuff is there. Yeah, let's get the stuff. So down to verse 17, they're going to get the stuff. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. But the people trampled him in the gate, and he died, just as the man of God had said, who spoke when the king came down to him. So it happened just as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two sayas of barley for a shekel and a say of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. Then that officer had answered the man of God and said, Now look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. If you don't have faith, you're not going to see what the Lord wants to do come to fruition in your life. He actually got to see it, but he didn't get to partake of it, which in my opinion is like so much worse when you actually get to see it, but then you can't partake of it. Even Ecclesiastes mentions what a curse it is for a man to see the blessing and not to be able to partake of it. That's a very rough paraphrase, but Ecclesiastes says something similar to that. And so he actually got to see the Lord's provision, he didn't get to partake of it. A lot of the times, you won't even get to see what the Lord could have done if you had exercised faith, if you had believed in what he had said and what he had spoken in your life and what he had said in his word. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those that believe in him must believe that he is and must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, Hebrews eleven six. So without faith, you can't please God. Without faith, you're not going to see what it is he really wants to do in your life. So believe. Believe in his word. Believe in his word to you. Believe. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you and God bless.